Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. This is turkey tail, Trimetes versicolor, a very common medicinal fungus that you'll find growing on deadwood in deciduous woodlands, and specifically, it likes growing on dead hardwoods. It's a saprophytic fungus, which is the, the group of fungus which breaks down decaying plant and animal matter. In most books, you'll see turkey tail classified as inedible, but that doesn't mean that it's toxic. Generally, when a, a fungi is classed as inedible, it just means that the texture isn't good for eating. But toxic or poisonous is something completely different. So generally, I wouldn't just eat turkey tail as they are because the, the texture is like leather, but they're good powdered or dried using for tea. So first of all, let's take a look at how to identify turkey tail. So it can be found all year, although you will find more flushes of it in the autumn. And as I said before, it likes to grow on dead hardwoods. It often grows in quite large flushes and they grow in overlapping shelves. So on the top, the cap is fairly smooth, sometimes be a bit velvety, and they have these zonal semicircles of varying colours. Now on different flushes of turkey tail, they can be quite different in colour. These ones are like a light and dark brown, which is probably the most common. You can also get yellow and black. One thing that's really important is that the edge of the, of the fungus, the margin here, it has a white or off-white area. Now it has to have that. On the underside, turkey tails, uh, white or off-white and an important ID feature is that they have tiny pores which is where the fungus releases its spores. Now identification from the cap alone isn't enough because birch maize gill which has very similar patterns as this on the underside it has gills rather than pores. There are a few lookalikes to turkey tail. Sterium hirsutum, which has the great common name hairy curtain crust, can look fairly similar on the cap, but they have a yellow brownish colour underneath rather than white or off white. So the fungi like hairy curtain crust that look a bit similar to turkey tail aren't poisonous but it's still very important to get a 100% identification if you're going to use these for making tea. So to collect the turkey tail, you can just simply remove it like that, or you can use a knife if, it's, if it doesn't come off that easily. The turkey tail is said to have a lot of health benefits. Now I'm a forager and I don't have any medical knowledge so you will need to do your own research into that but from from what I've read there's been a lot of recent clinical studies that have had a lot of positive results in saying that the, the fungus has uh, been shown to have antiviral antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties and also to help boost the immune system and even the mycologist Paul Stamets he said that he helped to treat his mother's cancer with this and he, he did a really interesting TED Talks on that. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. As with anything medicinal, it's best not to use too often. So I'll have turkey tail tea maybe once, twice a week at the most. 
and I'll alternate it with birch polypore, which I keep dried. So with birch polypore, I'd probably have maybe three slices like that for a cup of tea. With turkey tails, I'd have like five or six of these mushrooms. They both have fairly similar properties, these. So simply just put them in your cup and add boiling water and just let that steep for about five minutes or so. It's not got a very strong flavour, either this turkey tail or birch polypore, but if you don't like the flavour of it, you can just add it to sort of like green tea or you can uh, like add in some herbs like fennel or mint. <laughs> 